Nate Scott could be the first one off the bench. Yeah, you know, you want to honor your seniors in the best possible way, but at the same time, you got to win the basketball game too. So unless this was a, a Eastern was already in the postseason tournament, I can see a, a ceremonial gesture. Yep. But in this particular case, no affair con. And we know how important he is to get off to a hot start. Well, he's had a hot start as of late. Five straight double-figure games. He had 27 in six against the Cardinals. That was a 75-64 setback. As Eastern Michigan comes in 10 and 19, 5 and 13 in conference play. And right off the bat, Western Michigan grabs a three from the corner as Lamar Norman Jr. picking up where he left off in that first game. He put up a career high 34 against the Eagles. 11 three pointers in their last game, a big upset win just the other day. So they're going to want to stay hot from outside, but Eastern, they got to figure out what they're going to do offensively now. Well, they will start with Monty Scott here on the left wing, drives into the lane, scoops, and scores. Eastern. Beautiful basket. Get into the paint. We talked about it all season long. Then. I love that they're just making a pointed effort to get the ball into the paint. Monty Scott had 15 in that setback to the Cardinals. But, Justin, what do you see being the keys to victory for both of these teams? Well, first and foremost, for Eastern Michigan, it's honor thy seniors. Again, it's one of those things where you got all the emotions, you're still playing for something. On the other hand, Western Michigan, embrace that spoiler role. There's nothing better than in your in-state rival to say, you know what, why don't you stay home with us for the rest of the season? So I see that, but, but controlling the game as well and taking good shots offensively, another thing they have to keep an eye on. There's a long arcing three by Thomas Benet. That took an awkward bounce above the shot clock. Eventually it comes down, though, to the Broncos, and they will control it here with White at the top of the key. He'll pop for a three, and Darion Spotsville will bring it down the floor. Spotsville, one of those seniors that, of course, was honored before the game, and just the Iron Man for Eastern Michigan this season, playing in every game this year, despite all the injuries and COVID protocols the team has dealt with. We're trying to beat it. Works his way down in the paint, kicks it out. That goes to McMillan. Now they feed it right side. That one from the wing. Another good look at a three, and they'll bury another one. Lamar Norman Jr., second three of the game, and it's a four-point advantage. You know there's a lot of flux when you have a man down and you're trying to get back defensively, but you cannot lose Norman. He's the one guy you got to stay on the whole time. Norman has three 30-point games this year as Farrakhan tries to answer the bell from the corner. His shot offline. Norman also with 14 20 plus games this year. And driving in for some contact is Western Michigan. That's Josiah Freeman, the freshman guard. He'll draw some contact. You know, one thing Western's going to be able to do in this game is they're going to play loose. And that's the, the, the nice thing, I guess, if you're talking about not you know, making a postseason tournament or not necessarily playing for anything. You don't have the pressures that come with, I have to make and play everything perfect to have my season be extended. At this point, they can play loose, they can have fun with things, and let the chips fall where they may. Eastern, on the other hand, a little tight right now, it yeah. seems. That's the thing, Eastern has three straight home games to really try to make some noise as Farrakhan finds his way into the lane. And they struggled, they went one and two in those three home games. They fell to Buffalo, fell to Akron, and then beat Northern Illinois by two. And then you mentioned on the road to Ball State, that was a close game with seven minutes to go. A hard-fought game by the Eagles, but they couldn't finish. Yeah, that's something that uh, another three, too. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting because let it fly. If you're Western at this particular point, you, you, you've shown that you can shoot the ball. You're feeling yourselves right now. You've got to let it go. It's kind of surprising to see them hit all these threes. They are 10th in the MAC and three-point field goal percentage at 33%. But three of five to start this one. Three straight threes buried. And here comes Nate Scott. Again, didn't get the start. Mojai checking in with him. But Nate Scott, the other senior that was honored before the game. And what a job he has done for this Eastern Michigan team. Can't say enough about him. He's been that glue guy. Him and Darion Spotsville, just, you know, kind of the Iron Men, if you will. They've been around for a long time this season and contributed in so many different ways. There's Farrakhan, high arcing two, his shot off line. Remember Farrakhan's last home game, he went off. He was perfect in the first half out of one missed free throw, but he was eight of eight from the field. So far, 0 for two to start this one. Let's make that one for two. Broncos controlling it, trying to back down Mojai. They do, and then Nate Scott comes from behind, swats that one out of bounds. Last touch by Western, so great defense by Eastern Michigan. Good help side defense. And you know, this is the line if you wanted to see to start the game. You know, I know it's nine to four in favor of Western right now, but this is your puncher's chance, you know, group. You had to honor your seniors getting them in there, but you know, now we're gonna see if Eastern what they're going to be playing with the rest of the day. 
Scott will have it on the left wing, feeds it back to Spotsville, 15 to shoot. Here's Nate Scott, he'll try a three. That one offline, and then chases down his own rebound. Great hustle by Nate Scott. He'll try another three from the top of the key. That one rattles around, takes a couple awkward bounces. Eastern 0 for 3 from the long line in this game. Yeah, they got two buckets. Where were the buckets? Inside. Thank you. What, what is this freewheeling three-point shooting contest they're trying to, to prove right now? Work it. Get it inside. Moe's been in great position, and they're not feeding him inside yet. And that one will trickle out of bounds. 16th all-time meeting between these two teams. Broncos leading the series 61-54. to Eastern's gotten the better of Western as of late, winning six of the last seven, but none bigger than right now, Justin, because, again, what is in front of EMU? Eastern's got all the pressure. They, they got to be able to handle it. Three straight threes for the Broncos to start this game. Two coming from Lamar Norman Jr. He has now set the all-time Western Michigan three-point a major, a three point makes in a season. He had 91 coming into the year. He now passes Levi Ross, who set that mark back during the 04 05 season. But here you see the history between these two teams. They have not swept since 1999. Y2K was around. Wow. The last time Eastern Michigan swept all the Michigan teams. Y2K. Blast from the past there, Ryan. Where were you in? the year 2000 going into Y2K. I remember I was at my house with my parents because they didn't want anybody, I was a young kid <laughs> anyway, but they didn't want anybody going out doing anything because you didn't know what was going to happen. I think I was uh, also at home. Uh, young freshman in high school back in 1999. Yep, same here. I believe it was that long ago. Getting old there. Uh, don't remind me. Right now, though, it's a four-point lead for the Broncos as Farrakhan split his free throws. Norman has it right wing, feeds it right side. Now trying to drive in is Smith. Then he drops it back off. That one swatted by Eastern Michigan. Good defense in the last three possessions. They've held the Broncos scoreless over the last two minutes. There's Spotsville. Feeds down inside to Colin Golson. Golson had two and eight in the first meeting, but had eight points and four rebounds. And they're set back to Ball State. Good look, a little strong. But that's, that's Colin's game. Feed it left side, that goes to White. Mojai came out for help defense, back to Smith. They feed it now right side, 12 to shoot here on the shot clock. Broncos trying to find something down in the lane. Again, only three three-pointers for them. Eastern keeping everything on the outside. Now they try to drive in with Hastings. Fadeaway shot is good. First time they got inside and got a good look, but I love what Eastern's doing defensively. We're now spot ball back without it being a very difficult pass, and that's something they're gonna have to continue on. And Norman made the first two field goals of this game, back-to-back -back threes. Here's Nate Scott. He's trying to fill it up from the corner. That one offline. Golson chases down the rebound, then goes out on Eastern Michigan. More threes, and I get it. It's part of the offense. It's part of the flow. And that wasn't, you, if you get to the paint, if you touch the green area with the basketball, your foot, I'm probably not going to kill you for throwing it outside for an open look three. Nate Scott was open on that one. But e Eastern has now taken five threes, and that was the first one that was Really a good look. They've got to get better at getting in and finding the right shot. Against the Broncos in their first meeting, they put up 20 three-point attempts. They made seven for 35%. But they're dead last in the conference in three-point field goal percentage. They should run 33% a game. They're 0 for 5 to start this one. Eight to shoot. They're trying to work it down low with Wright. Good defense there by Mojai. Once again, uh, just Spotsville all over Norman. Couldn't get the ball back. Now they feed it into Jai. Jai catches that one and travels. And that kind of goes back to what you talked with Stan Heath about earlier this week. Yeah, I talked to him on the call and I said, you know, what kind of jump has Mo made in his freshman campaign? And he said confidence was the number one thing that jumped off the page to him. He's now more confident. But again, when you're 6'11", 6'10", and you're playing in high school and you're beating up on all these six one guys that are trying to guard you, you're going to have a lot of success. But when you come to this level, that transformation is so much more difficult. And Mo playing with that confidence, hoping that his hands and his feet kind of follow along with that mental progression he's had this year, that's his next step. Well, right now it is a five to one run for the Broncos. Farrakhan trying to answer the bell and he does. Same style shot we saw here at home in their last game. Wheeled that one off the rim and spun right through. I mean, he's he's going to be a player. I mean, he already's proven that he's a player. But I mean, as he continues to grow and his basketball IQ gets better, 
Noah has a real chance to be special. Now an offensive foul by the Broncos as Gus Etchison tries to take it in. The Eagles can inch ever closer. And you know, not only is this senior day here for Eastern Michigan, it's also the, the final home game for Stan Heath in his first year. And Christy King and you had a chance to talk to, to Stan Heath and he kind of talked about some of the joy that his first year has brought to him. Right, Christy? Right. It's actually, it's been one of his brightest joys, bringing the past back to the present. When we talked to him earlier this week, he said he's been just really blessed and found just, again, the brightest joy of former players like Fred Cofield, who's a scout for the New York Knicks, Percy Cooper, along with 10 others who have come back to kind of rally behind this team. He said, guys I haven't seen in 30 years have been here to support us, basically saying, hey, win or lose, we've, we're going to be there for you and we support you. And he said that he's even had them come into the locker room and try to pep the players up, you know, to get them ready. So it's been really special for him to connect with players and rally the troops. And he said even with George Gervin, he said that was one of his idols growing up. He said, and I think most of the guys had to Google who George Gervin was. <laughs> so it's really been a special season for him, again, connecting the past with the present here as an Eagle. And you think about that four overtime game against FIU back in December when they dedicated what was the convocation center? Now the George Gervin game above center, and so George Gervin was here, and then of course meeting with the team. And, and Stan told you guys that you know it was his idol. But so to yeah. hear, so hear him talk for an hour was just special to him and special for his team. You know, and it's funny these kids don't recognize that. It, it would be like LeBron James coming into to the locker room for them, but obviously Stan has done a beautiful job of re-infusing energy into this program and bringing back former players is the first place to start to do that. There's number three by Western. That one is too strong, and then Mojai goes up for the rebound, but they're going to get a foul underneath the bucket. Jai was tangling with Titus Wright, but they're going to get Kevin David Rice for the foul. Yeah, they're going to get him for a little bit of a hold, unfortunately, because Mo was well positioned to bring down that board, even if he had a little bit of uh, contention. Western still looking for just their fifth field goal of the game, but just their second inside the three-pointer. They're four for nine to start this game, three of five from downtown. Driving baseline, nowhere to go, kick it out. For Smith, another three. Western settling for the outside shot as well. They were falling early, now they're four of six. Good defense once again, forced the outside sh shot. There's Rice. He looks inside to Jai, back to Luka Savicevic. Colin Golson will take it here, baseline. Pull up, jump shot is good, and Eastern ties the game at 11. Love the ball fake from Colin there. Move the defender, get him where he wants to create that separation, and a confident pull up. Six straight points for Eastern. Again, Western's gone cold over the last three minutes. This is a real opportunity for Eastern to control the game like I was talking about in my keys. Th this is where you gotta be able to clamp down. And Mojai comes in after the defense fell apart. Ball trickles out of bounds. Head to tie in with Tom Kelly, right? That's right, Ryan. Uh, Coach Dan Heath uh, was in his first year as an assistant at Michigan State University, and his players that he was assigned with Thomas Kelly and Mateen Cleaves. Now, he was very candid, Coach Heath. He said, Tom Kelly, he was a handful. He had to chase him down to classes, run him in the morning to make sure he got there, and Thomas Kelly would tell you the same thing. But he flipped his switch and has turned his life around, you know, had a great career overseas, got his degree, and he's just been such a great mentor to young people, Thomas Kelly has. He's turned into a fantastic coach, Stan, he said, and that his player development is off the charts. And he said, I know that Tom Izzo got him ready as he was an assistant himself at Michigan State, and he said, the one thing I love about players, and especially about Tom Kelly, is when players come back to you and say, Coach, I appreciate you being hard on me and being a tough on me. I needed that in my life. Coach Sandy went on, he said, I'm just so proud of him and he's been able to do and a bright future ahead. Ryan? Yeah, and I could, I could just kind of go off that. I was talking with Thomas before the game. I'd run into him in my days at Michigan State as well when he was on the staff and comes over Stan Heath. Gives him a big hug, knocks the water out of his hand, kind of spilled it on him, and they were just talking and laughing like good old times, a big embrace. So obviously that relationship, very real. Well, what also is real right now, Justin, is Eastern Michigan riding an 8-0 run, but that free throw will end that. Marquise Hastings at the line as he splits his pair and pulls Western Michigan back within one, 13-12. 
The Eagles have led just by those two points. They've trailed by as much as six in a must-win game for them in a game the Broncos are trying to play spoiler in. There's Savicevic trying to drive in through the right elbow. Fadeaway shot, no good. Rebound chased down to the corner by White. How about Golson coming down, trying to meet White at center court. Now they feed back inside. Just two points in the paint for the Broncos. Jump shot offline. Golson grabs the rebound. Good defensive set once again. Let's see if Noah can take over a little bit here. Barakon instead feeds to Savicevic. His three, and he fills it up from the right wing. Eastern Michigan out front by four. Where did that play originate? Noah. Right when he drove into the paint, touched the paint, kicked it out. Good shot. It goes, it always is a better shot when it goes in, but still a good look, well executed offense. Farrakhan's first assist of the game. Now inside is McMillan, his shot offline. Broncos now one for their last seven down the floor. Here's Farrakhan doing what you said, trying to take over. Runner in the lane gets it to go. Yep, Eastern's just got to continue full throttle here, and I think Stan feels it. The energy in the place feels like Eastern knows they should win this game, and, and Western just kind of playing. So as long as Eastern doesn't take that for granted and continues to press play, they should be in good shape, but they got to keep it on the defensive side. It's a 13 to 1 run right now here for Eastern Michigan as Golson is going to be charged for the foul. Trying to drive in was McMillan. But I'm with you. There's a different feeling in the building. You know, you, you tend to feel that on a, on a big day like this with senior night. You know it's the final home game of the year. But a lot on the line in this one, and some of the fans coming out to support EMU. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a, I remember my senior night. You were going to ask me about it, and I just remember feeling so pumped up that I had to calm myself down, uh, you know, back in varsity basketball. But the point of the thing is, is once that energy falls off, what's left mm -hmm. and Eastern has to make sure that they're bottling that energy to ride it for 40 minutes of play on this particular night to try to get the win they need to keep their season alive. And the inbound pass comes here baseline 15 to shoot here for the Broncos white will control it from the left wing he'll pop for a three that one spins all the way around the rim and pops out. They started deadly from the three point line making their first three they've missed their last four. Here's Benelli, feeds Farrakhan. He leads the way for Eastern Michigan with seven. Gary on Spotsville, picks up his dribble, back to Benelli. Catch and shoot three for him, too strong, and then rebound goes to Hastings. Hastings second in the conference in rebounds this season, averages right around nine a game, which leads Western Michigan. Now they feed inside, good defense again by the Eagles. He was trapped, but Golson, I think, is going to get charged for his second foul in the last minute. Yeah. And he's just so aggressive, and I love that about him, but it's also one of the problems that he continues to run into is they didn't, he didn't need to do what he did on that particular play to come over and try to backside help that, with that ball there, and, and that's going to put him on the bench for the rest of the half. So he's the only one with two for Eastern Michigan. That one well off the line by the Broncos. As Spotsville will chase it down. Now here at half court, feeding to Farrakhan. Farrakhan goes up! with the reverse lay-in on the right hand. He went left to right and spun it. Perfect execution on the fast break there. Percent from the good three-pointers, if you will. And they're 0 for 5, which is 0% uh, <laughs> when they just jack it. Well, it's a 15-1 run right now for Eastern Michigan. And of those points in the paint you're talking about, 14 of the 20 have come down low. Broncos still trying to shoot from the outside. They have struggled after making their first three. They're now three of nine. They've missed their last six three-pointers. And going back to that whole, you know, playing loose and playing free. Three-pointers are fun to shoot, Ryan. No one's going to argue with you that I love to shoot a, you know, a bunch of threes. Am I any good at it? No, but it's more fun to do it. Performance with NIU with 27 against the Cardinals Saturday. And did so without turning the basketball over. It was a sixth straight double-figure game, tied to season best stretch. I mentioned he's second on the all-time scoring list, but now three seconds to shoot here for Eastern. Here's Savicevic, step back three, top of the key, puts it up. And that one is left short. The Broncos will bring it back down the floor. So now, if you're Western, can you capitalize with Farrakhan potentially out for a while, possibly the game? The left wing three, left short again. Rebound chased down by McMillan. So first offensive board of the game for Western. There's Smith. Feeds it left side, that goes to Martin. 
Everything on the outside again. Now Norman Jr. trying to drive in the lane. Floater, and then it bounces off the backboard and drops. I think that, that Scott and Spotsville must have switched early in that possession because Monty was on him, and Darion had been guarding him as of late. A catch and shoot three, top of the key. Monty Scott fills it up, 23-14. Well, you mentioned about a Scott taking over. Monty grabs that first opportunity. Now Benelli goes up for the rebound, has it swatted out of his hands. Last touch for the Broncos. Well, you know, it's a two-pronged thing when a player goes down. First of all, he's a huge part of your offense, right? You run things through Noah Farrakhan, but it's also that emotional, is my guy okay? Is he gonna come back and play tonight, tomorrow, next week? What, what's going on? So a lot of that is going on through your mind. So you have to clear that out and continue to play with a huge absent part of what makes you successful. When Scott and Farrakhan both had great games at Ball State, Scott with the 15 points. It was his first double-figure game in nine before that. He had 10 against Toledo back on February 1st. But you also lean on your seniors here, yes. right? So you've got Nate Scott, a senior. Darian Spotsville, a senior. Monty Scott, a senior. Three seniors in your lineup right now that are gonna have to all pick up little parts of what Noah brought to you. Getting to the lane, playing good defense, running things out. So it's gonna be interesting to see if they all take this upon themselves to not let up. And downside is Bryce McBride again not playing. His foot's in a walking boot. And that will not help when you miss your free throws. So Eastern Michigan will have to go back to work defensively. 23-14 they lead. Broncos will control it here on the left side. 15 to shoot for them. Nice pass down into the paint and then hammering it home with a two-handed jam is Titus Wright. Great execution there with the pick and roll. Top of the key from Western. Johnny Scott trying to drive in, nowhere to go. Now he's open for three, he'll take it. That one is off the left side of the rim. Rebound in the hands of Spotsville, but then knocked out of bounds. So the Broncos will go back to work offensively. Western as a team going off that last field goal with that dunk. One for their last 12 down the floor. Again, they jumped out to a six point advantage, 11 to five. It's been Eastern's lead ever since. Buckle down here for five and a half minutes if you're Eastern Michigan. If you're Western, get good shots here. Try to close this gap. Nice block there as they were trying to pass it to the right wing. Norman, floater in the lane, doesn't go, and then Okongo goes up for the rebound. Another senior stepping up, playing big minutes, filling the gap. Axel. That was a no-look pass by Monty Scott, saved. Now here's Savicevic, he's open for another three. Oh, that one rattled around and popped out. Decent look for Savicevic, didn't fall that time, but I like the, the look there. Yeah, you can't hate that one. It's almost was a busted play anyway. Now have a foul here on Eastern Michigan. They already have 16 fouls. Western with four. Eagles with four timeouts left, Western with three. Yeah, just late getting back defensively. Savicevic knew it, he's gonna you know, take the foul there. Uh, but he's gonna have to watch it. Because <laughs> if Noah doesn't come back in this game, he's gonna be relied upon to run uh, some of the point in this. And looking down the depth chart beyond him, who you got? It's pretty bleak. Kevin maybe, David Rice. maybe Kevin David Rice, who had a heck of a game earlier this, uh, this year. It looks like he will get a little chance to run some of the point here. Yeah, Rice had a 15-point game against Central, and that bought him a start the following game at Northern Illinois. He struggled, though, in that game, only with four points. He was one of three from the floor. But at the line right now is Adrian Martin. Martin averages around 19 minutes a game. He's played in 28 contests this year, starting 13. And he'll make both of his free throws, so it's 23-18. That's four straight now for Western Michigan. The Eagles have gone cold over the last minute 40. The last bucket was that three from Monty Scott. Now here's Nate Scott. He's trying to drive in, nowhere to go. Feeds it over to Darion Spotsville. Splits the lane and then it's blocked at the rim. Titus Wright swats it away. Great help side defense there. I think that uh, Darion thought he was good. Good and clear. He even looked at the referee as far as a goal to nah. Blocked. Right with his 19th block of the season, 16th in the max as far as blocks are concerned, and Okongo now with two big rebounds. Good defensive there, not letting them get off of his hip. Pestering. 
Spotsville picks up his dribble near the left elbow, now feeds over to Nate Scott. Monty Scott will take it, long three for him. That one is left short and will go out of bounds. So Eastern again settles for the outside. Three to 18, and unfortunately, we still don't have word as to Noah Farrakhan, what his status may be, I would expect, at least out until the second half. Absolutely, uh, you know, no reason to rush him back. We're just saying in the break, I mean, look, the next four minutes are gonna be crucial, but can Eastern continue to keep this lead and play strong into the second half? We'll see. It's going to start with defense like that. They have been able to keep the Broncos out of the paint. Just six points for Western Michigan down low. Eastern still with 14. Since Noah's been out, they've been settling for some long shots. The only one that's gone in is Monty Scott. That was the lone field goal for them. That was at the 6-26 mark. Here's Mo Jai. They got him out near the three-point arc, trying to battle his way in. Good, Good look. opportunity. That Good was, look. Yep. Just trying to will his way down there. Broncos, meanwhile, 6 of 23 in this game. Half of those, though, from the three-point line. They're 3 of 11 from downtown. Screen set. Darian Spotsville runs into it. A little, little acting by Wright. He takes a spill. But they're going to get Spotsville for the foul. Darian's been playing with a little bit of aggression, not in a bad way, but that toughness. You watch him the next time he, on the offensive side. He gets in, and he kind of tucks the ball like he's a running back going through the lane. Gives a little extra shoulder action on the offensive side. Got called for a little extra shoulder action on the defensive side on that one. So Wright will head back to the free throw line. For Western Michigan, where they've been three of four in this game. Wright, one for five from the floor, and he'll miss his first, so no opportunity for the second. Eight team fouls for Eastern, four for Western. 2.53 to play here, first half. Ryan Woolley, Justin Rose, Christy King with you. Final home game of the year for the Eagles. Going back inside, I like it. Jai kicks it back out to Spotsville. Now with seven to shoot. Jai sets a mini screen. Now they try feeding into Jai. That's off of Bronco. So it will stay with Easter with two seconds to go. You know, that's a play that I keep bringing it up. But Mo is going to be a dominant force in the future with that type of play, rolling to the basket, had a mismatch. I think that Darian didn't really help him by where he dribbled it to. If he would have just pulled it back out, the switch was on. Norman would have been on Mojai. And, and that's what Stan's talking to him right now about. Get your hands ready. When you are rolling to the basket, if you're not ready to receive a pass, what are you doing down there? Well, we've seen it a couple times. Farrakhan trying to feed Jai, and he's turned it over. Now the inbound pass to Kevin David Rice. Air balls it, Mojai had it in his hands, then goes out of bounds. They're waiting to make the call. Side judge coming in saying Eastern basketball, like Mo battling. And then right before that, you saw the shot clock go from two seconds to 20. That's because Adrian Martin picked up a foul before the inbound came in. So two, make that one foul and one out of bounds play. So five team fouls here for Western. 13 to shoot here for the Eagles. Spotsville picks up his dribble. He was looking for Jai. Now a bank it off the backboard and through. Looked at exercised all his options before he realized he just had to put it up. Second field goal with Farrakhan not on the floor. Now Rice is going to pick up a foul as he was guarding Edgerton. Yeah, Stan's not happy right now because now they're going to the line. You're letting a team hang around without making them work for it. And that's what's going to make a coach mad when he realizes that as of right now, as far as he knows, Noah's not back out on the bench. He's not coming into the game anytime soon. I'm sure his coaching staff has let him know maybe some of the severity of it, but you can't let Western hang around and keep belief because the longer this game goes on and they're within striking distance, you know they're going to feel good about themselves. Well, the free throw missed again. Second time at the line, they have missed the front end of the one and one. So a huge opportunity now for the Eagles. The Broncos is the team, though. Shoot 70% from the free throw line. Right now they're shooting 50%. They're three of six. They've missed their last two. Now here's Jai. Takes it aggressively into the hole. Pulls over the defender. They'll get a blocking foul. And that's just Mo working. If we can re-rack that particular play longer than just the inbound pass because he is absolutely working to get the ball into him. And that's what gives him that opportunity to get that. Watch him work. He gets good position on him, and he's able to move around. That ball went to the wing and to the top and to the wing again before it went in. Mo was working the whole time. 
That's the sixth team foul. That's going to stay here with Eastern. Not a shooting foul, but one away from the one and one. 148 to play here, first half. Eagles on top, 25-18. Eastern shooting 11 of 29 for the floor, 38%, two of 13 from the long line. Here's Nate Scott, feeds it over to the corner, back to Scott. Jai was calling for it, Nate Scott gonna drive in though, loses the shot, grabs his own rebound, then loses it again, and then pulled away here by Martin. Decent take by Nate there. Got a little scared, obviously, with the backside defense coming over to alter the shot, but I like the aggressiveness going to the basket. Yardis White will control it. The sophomore out of Canton. Step back three, long three for him. And Spotsville goes up for the rebound and had it ripped out of his hands. Now Norman Jr. for three right wing, and he buries it. That's a backbreaker right there. You had the stop you needed. You didn't get the rebound two on one. And all of a sudden, you're at a two-possession game. Real special player, you know, and, and obviously the team's not having the success that they would have wanted around him, but, man, that's something to build on for the future. It's kind of surprising. Norman leads the Mac in scoring, and Marquise Hastings second in the Mac in rebounds. But yet your team yeah, is sitting at 7-22. Three in conference. They feed inside to Kevin David Rice. He goes up. No foul call. Now they're trying to push it. Here's Norman again. Same spot he just made the last three from. Four three-pointers for Storm and Norman, and it's 25-24. You know, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And that's the same spot you just said. It spots goal is right in front of him. Didn't give him anywhere to go, but Eastern's going to have to try to just settle for the last shot, maintain this lead going into the break. They've outscored Eastern Michigan 10-5 since Farrakhan has been out of this game. One-point lead. They'll hold it for the final shot here. Spotsville. Drives right side, takes it all the way to the lane. He went for the jam, but he's fouled in the process. Malik McMillan came over to swat it away. They're gonna get McMillan for the foul. What a take. What did I tell you? A little bit like a running back going yep. through the lane, because watch as he gathers this basketball and then says, I'm not stopping. I don't care if anybody's in my way. I'm gonna challenge for that. Darian Spotsville, play big on senior night. Spotsville scored the last field goal for Eastern Michigan. He has four points, trying to add on to it with the free throw here. He's 0 for 2 so far in the game. Make it 1 for 3. Spotsville shoots around 60% this season. He had 11 and 9 against the Broncos in the first meeting. That one too strong. Rebound pulled down by McMillan. They'll feed it up. Spotsville here at half court. Throws it up at the buzzer. Oh! The way he's the only player in double figures either way. He has 11 points for the Broncos coming into the second half. Eastern Michigan being led by Noah Farrakhan. He has nine. Well, we're still trying to get word whether or not he may be able to return or not. Here's Golson for Eastern. First attempt, no good, grabs his own rebound, goes back up and draws some contact. That's the way that you're gonna come out in the second half and just continue to say, you know, we're in charge here. We're in charge here, it's our home court, it's senior night, we still have something to play for. It's gutsy plays, it's that extra effort. If you continue to get that, you're gonna continue to hold that lead. So far, Golson with four points in this game. Christy King had an opportunity to uh, talk to Western Michigan head coach Clayton Bates coming out of the tunnel. Christy, what'd you find out from him? For jump shots, um, the coach Bates kept it very simple. You just have to settle for jump shots. So we weren't aggressive. And then, you know, the size really bothered us for Eastern. So just do those things and we'll be good to go. What do you think there, Justin? Yeah, I mean, obviously, they have to just continue to find the shots that got him back into this game. I mean, Norman is the guy that they have to lock down on, but they're going to key on him a lot. If, if they can keep Spotsville on him one-on-one -on -one and not have to do a lot of switching and shifting, that's what they'd like to do, but it'll be interesting to see if they've done any adjustments because as much as we'd like to think that Eastern's made their adjustments, Western's made their adjustments, adjustments too, and Norman's going to get more looks. And again, Noah Farrakhan went out right around the seven to eight minute mark. And Monty Scott popped a three right away at the 626 mark of the first half. After that, they had one field goal. That was Darian Spotsville. And then Spotsville was able to convert a free throw as well. So they scored a grand total of six points in those final seven minutes. Not great, Bob. <laughs> Not great. The referee's going over to the monitor for something. It looked like Mojai was called for the over the back call but was there not sure what they're looking at hook and hold or 
Well, they figured it out right away. Ah, clarifying who the foul was on. As it stands now, it's still Moe's, according to the scoreboard above us. Eastern still leading by two, 26-24. And I haven't seen any change yet. So it looks like it will stick with Mo. The B artist White will bring it up the floor, and you heard Stan Heath tell Christy there at the half, too. They cannot allow White to get going. He's their third leading scorer. Averages right around eight points in contest. He didn't play against Eastern Michigan in the first goal round, but did have 12 points against BG. Noah Farrakhan emerging from the tunnel with a walking boot on. He's in street clothes, and it looks like he is going to be done as he sits at the end of the bench for the night. What a disappointment for him, as well as Eastern Michigan's fans that came out to see the star-studded freshman. But someone's got to step up. Yep, now, now it's up to the team. Now you know, they knew in the locker room. Probably Stan Heath told them, look, we're not going to have Noah for the second 20. What can you do, what will you do to find your way to Cleveland? Here's Savicevic, drives in, tried to feed Moja. That was just a bad pass. Uh, quick whistle as they bring it back down the floor. Golson trying to calm down Savicevic. He's even beating himself up with the turnover, which will be their fourth of the game. Yeah, really unfortunate. And it's pushing it's pushing Savicevic into a role he's not used to. He's now got to be the floor general here. That's the floor general that you're seeing on your screen. And he's in a boot. He's done for the day. You know, he twisted that ankle, looks like pretty good. And so he's going to have to really find out how to play smart basketball because he's not coming in for a spot duty couple minutes. He's playing probably three-fourths of the rest of this game. Well, Savicevic turned it over, and then he got a quick foul. So already three fouls on Luka. Now spinning underneath is Wright. He got matched up with Mo Jai. Jai had his position with his hands up. No good Jai for the foul. I'm going to let the fans do the talking behind my shoulder here. I don't I don't know what else you can ask from a, from a 6'10 guy. Hands are straight in the air, follows the body. There's nothing below. And again, a block starts when the hand touches the ball. The body can touch after the contact is made with the ball. His right. fingers got all ball as that one hits Oof. the back side of the rim and drops through. Western struggled from the free throw line. They've missed their last three until that last make. They're now four of seven in this game. I think Mo is joking alongside of the Western Michigan player <laughs> who might be agreeing <laughs> with him that that was a great, great block. But hey, nonetheless, two points and Look at there, Ryan. That ties the game, 26 all. You see the free throw disparity, Eastern two of eight, Western now five of eight. And Eastern goes back to work offensively. They're one for their last eight down the floor. Here's Savicevic, skip pass over to Monty Scott. Back to Luka. Trying to feed into Mo Jai. You would expect to see a lot of that. Savicevic was calling for it. Now Jai gonna take it his whole way, and then he loses it. Back-to-back -back turnovers for Eastern Michigan. Just catching the ball a little bit too far out of the basket. That's out of his real comfort range. He likes to do one or two dribbles, and then he's going into his move. He doesn't want to be moving four to six feet to get to his position. So White will control it. Drives in, takes it all the way, loose, and then it's corralled here by Spotsville. Him and Colin Golson running the length of the four. Spotsville picks it up, out to Monty Scott. He's open for three, and he buries it! A Great second three-pointer for Monty Scott, and you talk about a shot in the arm, but they give him a two. Great look, good kick, fast break at its best. Get the best shot you can. He didn't have numbers down originally, waited for it, made it happen. So just inside, but then Western, guess who? Lamar Norman Jr. from the right side will fill it up. I mean, he's the one guy who's going to beat you. He's the one guy that's going to beat you. So if your defensive assignment is him, you cannot lose him. Norman now with 14 points. Here's Lukas Savicevic for three. And he'll bury one from the right side. Good to get him heated up. You never know if you're going to need Luka in the next game. And the next game might decide your future. This game's going to decide your future, but so might the next one. So getting confidence in him, huge too. Again, Eastern has to win this game and beat Miami in the final game of the regular season and have Bowling Green and Northern Illinois each lose one. And then the Broncos come right back again. Guess who? Norman banks open. I mean, there was a switch there. And I am so fascinated on the defensive work Darian's
Pottsville's doing on Norman, and they had to switch, and he didn't want to, and that left Golston, you know, on his own. Well, beautiful pass inside to Mojai. He finishes at the rim, so now the offense clicking a little bit here for the Eagles. Got to go inside to that kid. I mean, every time he touches the ball, he's getting better. 32-31. Make that 33-32. 18 points in the paint for Eastern Michigan. Norman again drives in. Floater bounces around and then Jai skies for the rebound. Huge rebound for him. Get the shot now. Now you don't have Noah who's who's tends to be a quick trigger when it comes to running the offense. You can you can move it around a little bit here and get the shot that you want. And they'll get a whistle away from the bucket. That's because another Eagle comes up limping, and that's Spotsville. That is not a good sign. Is he is your number one defensive lockdown player, and he's been tasked with trying to keep Norman in check. And obviously, Norman is still doing his thing a little bit here, but he's the one guy who's been on him very closely. So Stan is trying to rally his troops here a little bit. I'm not a doctor, and I don't want to speculate, but the way he was moving looked like maybe a cramp. So we'll keep an eye on that. But either way, you're down. Noah Farrakhan, Bryce McBride, and now Spotsville's out. And Luka Savicevic scores his second field goal in the three down the floor. I mean, and that's that's what Noah Farrakhan does. Gets to the paint. If Eastern can hear me right now, and if Western defensively can hear me right now, you either get to the paint or stop him from getting to the paint. For the long line, Eastern's 3 of 14 in this game, but they've scored 20 of their 35 points in the paint. Norman Jr. step back three left side, leaves that one short. Oh, nice kick out. Now they'll try another three from the right side, and Beardis White will fill it up. And Stan he puts his hand above his head and comes down slowly like your dad used to do when you made a mistake as a teenager. Just can't give them other opportunities to fix their own mistakes. Monty Scott then answers the bell from the left wing. A three-point shootout here at Ypsilanti. Three straight threes by Western, and it's entered by Monty Scott now in double figures with 10. The one good thing about being in a close game, a one possession game, is you don't let go of your laurels. You don't rest. You don't have a huge lead to go on. And Eastern Michigan right now. We're going to say that was last touch by the Eagles. I uh, has an office in the athletic department. <laughs> he said, whenever I go to my office, he's always sitting there doing homework, saying hello, chatting. So just a lot of fond memories of the seniors for Coach Sam Heath, Brian. Yeah, it's always a, a sad but happy time for anybody on senior night as Western picks up another field goal. That's Smith, 38-37 now. I had to laugh, though, about the, the Italian spaghetti and regular spaghetti. It, it, it's weird, depending on what people consider true Italian food, as you said, jihad, <laughs> will scoop and score. Like, you, you ask most Italians if they like Olive Garden, and they'll look at you sideways. Like, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I even know that that's, that's not true Italian food. It's still good, though. I, I mean, you know, it's like Taco Bell. It's the best Mexican food you can get, in yeah. my estimation. Of course, a lot of team dinners being held at Olive Garden, too, over the years. Right now, Monty Scott leading the way for Eastern Michigan. He has 10 after that last made three, but he turns it over here for Eastern's fifth turnover. Now, Norman Jr. will take it coast to coast. will pull Western Michigan back within one. Really interesting juncture of the game right now for Eastern Michigan. Yeah, Darian Spotsville is getting ready to check back in. That's a good sign. He can help, uh, you know, alleviate some of the, the mix and match you have with the roster here. But wow, what a spin move by Savicevic. Woo. Again, fill the role of the guy that you're replacing to the best of your ability. Now, he is not Noah Farrakhan, but that was a Noah Farrakhan-esque move, getting into the paint. And again, Eastern Michigan, good things happen when you go inside. Keep doing that. Savicevic has only been in double figures one time this season. That's when he had 11 against Ohio. Previous to tonight's game, he hadn't scored in his last three outings. Right. He also hadn't had this many minutes in right. the last three outings. I mean, he's, he's tasked, you know, and this is a guy that probably plays significant time on the scout team during practice so he gets his run he's he's well you know prepared to play this this many minutes it's just on this spotlight on this stage with this much at stake oh what a rebound by kevin david rice and he throws it back up as he took a spill to the floor looking for the call didn't get it and now in transition here's martin back to norman jr left wing three for him wow this kid can't oh, miss automatic i mean it, it just comes off his wrist and you just know what's going in 
Western finally regaining the lead, Ryan. First time since early in the first half. Again, it was 11 to five when they had their largest lead. It was six points. Savicevic feeds it right wing. Kevin David Rice drives baseline around three different Broncos and scores to tie it at 44. Gotta have a strong take like that to, to just get the confidence going. I mean, three guys charging at him. He didn't cower, went up strong, found the lane. They didn't follow him, so he get to the rim. Beautiful play. There's White. Feeds it left side. Now they go inside to right. Ten seconds to shoot. Basketball band's got... Western a little confused. They thought it was late in the shot clock. Instead, a three air ball to nobody. He was able to box out Max Smith. He was left alone, and he puts it back in. I think that Jihad got a little bit lost on what was happening during that play, and his play, his man went to the rim, and he didn't. Against Miami, BG's next game will be at Toledo. Ohio's next game is at NIU. So a lot to be decided still, but it all starts here in the final 11:34 for the Eagles. Here's Golson. His double team tries to pass out of it, and then it's saved on the baseline by Kevin David Rice. Eight to shoot here for EMU. Spotsville back into the game, moving Monty Scott. He'll take it into the paint. Triple team comes. Colin Golson for three wide open, and then Mo Jai nearly had the rebound. Falls it in the hands of Kevin David Rice. Back to Jai, and then a reverse lay-in by Jai. I think that the second half, if Eastern's not giving Mo Jai a touch every single down, time down the floor, they're not doing it right. He's got it. He's got the size advantage, big time down low, and he's a guy that can facilitate for you. He's not feeling. He's feeling a little something in his legs there after he went up there. So he's working through that. But but Mo is kind of the key here as far as I'm looking at this game right now. Because who else are you going to run it through? Who, Ryan? I mean, who's going to be the guy to to at least facilitate your offense? Well, again, they had Luca out there for a while, and now they've rotated him with Kevin David Rice. And now trying to answer the call on the other side for the Broncos was Smith, knocked away, and now Spotsville will control it. Again, Luca is playing with three fouls, as is Colin Golson. Look inside. Now here's Rice, open for three! Kevin David Rice fills it up! 49-46. Feeling that shot right there, but again, Mo was in there, and that's why I'm keep. I, I said it. You know, get inside, look inside. He's continuing to work hard to get open inside. Now they go inside themselves as McMillan gets in there for the Broncos. Two empty possessions for Western Michigan. They've been scoreless now over the last minute 30. Spotsville back to Rice. He's feeling it, going for another three. Wow, that was NBA range from the left side. And how about the spark off the bench? I remember the game earlier this year when threes in a game and Easter now up 52-46. When you were asking me earlier, you know, what, what do they got to do offensively? Who's going to find the scoring? He was not on the tip of our tongue. He was not the first guy I was thinking of, but look, you take it where you can get it. And that time he was just out of position as Josiah Freeman found his way into the paint. And Western will answer the call. 52-48, that ends a 8-0 run. Rice has it now right wing. Congo's into the game for EMU as well. Spotsville will control it. Spotsville trying to work his way in. Leaves that one short and chases down the rebound. Good hustle by Darion. Eastern is a team with 29 boards in this game. It's a plus five advantage over the Broncos as Kevin David Rice has it, then he's stripped. And now he's trying to corral it. Baseline, how did he come away with that? And then a reach-in foul on Western. Hustle plays, hustle plays, Ryan, and that's just another one. I mean, he, he had that stripped away from him. Didn't give up on it. First thing, kids, if the ball is taken away from you, don't slap your hands and get upset at yourself. Go after it and try to get it back without fouling, and that's what Kevin did in that particular scenario. Understanding that he's being leaned on right now. Everybody's kind of looking for what's going on as they try to piece this together in real time. I mean, how difficult is that, Ryan? They've been practicing all week with Noah, yep. and now they're just, okay, you don't practice for this. Well, as you said, going to break at one of those times, backs against the wall, leave it all on the floor, winner take all, I'll use any cliche you want, you need to give everything you have in this final game, otherwise your season is technically over. No chance to go to Cleveland. There's Spotsville, floater in the lane, will leave it short, loose, and then Spotsville with a second effort, oh. almost got the putback, and then he comes up grabbing his back. 
Oh, oh my goodness. You know, you've got <laughs> you've got two guys in walking boots on the bench. You got Mojai over there with the Theragun working on his thigh, it looks like. And now you've got your lockdown defender come down a little awkward right there. You could just see it just came down a little bit weird working out that massage therapy on the back there. And uh, man, interesting, interesting roster decisions to be made right now because again, you're holding a four point lead. He's gonna have to go off to the side. Someone's gonna have to take his free throws for him. So you're asking guys that aren't in the game flow to do things that you would normally ask them to do in the game flow coming off cold off the bench or, or you know on the floor but very very interesting and this would be a heck of a victory for eastern michigan as you said kind of piecemealing it together as you go we, we mentioned spotsville being eastern michigan's iron man all year 29 games he has played in this year 25 starts heading into tonight's contest also got the start there you see farrakhan now on the bench he left with an injury with nine points you mentioned the walking boot Monty Scott leading the way with Lucas Savicevic, each with 10 points, and Axel Okongo has now stepped to the free throw line. The senior out of France to shoot the free throws for Darion. Do they get to choose who takes his free throws? If they do, I wouldn't have put Okongo at I, the line. I would have probably not chosen him either, uh, considering who else you have on the floor. I think it goes based on who substitutes in for him. Ah, but he was on the floor, I believe. That's, in, that's an interesting, hey, one of two. He got it done. Again, senior night, guys got to step up and do what they can do. And now Western, it's the same situation. Playing with that house money, you're within five points of this team. There, there's no way to think that you're out of this game. It's still, though, a 9-2 to two run for Eastern Michigan. 53-48, but the offensive rebound kicked back here to Western, and that's been killing the Eagles in this game. Four rebounds. Here's Norman Jr. trying to make him pay, and he does. I mean, he's just on fire. He's he's the guy that's going to get this one for Western Michigan. There's no doubt about it. And what can you do about that? I was well defended. What you can do is you can get the offensive rebound or the defensive rebound and leave him the one shot. That's what you can do. Lamar Norman Jr. now with 25 points after that made three. Kevin David Rice will drive baseline and again tax in the paint. Eastern's doubled up Western in the paint, 28 to 14. It's so crucial. And we've said it. In their wins that we've called, they've gotten, they've certainly outscored, you know, besides the outlier where they had, what, 4,000 4, three pointers. Yep. Uh, it's been inside, and that's where they're getting it done from. So. Uh, I'd like to see this team kind of, this shows, you know, if anything, win or lose here. This is a great team game right now for Eastern Michigan. And I'm not trying to discredit Western Michigan at all, but they're not facing the same things that Eastern's facing during this game at all. And I know we're giving them a lot of shine for it, but it's been wild to see the mix mat the mismatching of everything that they're dealing with. So Catholic Central, yes. Okay, and then final question is, what does it mean to have your son now playing for Stan Heath, your good friend? You know, when I go back, we just had a great relationship with Stan and I. So proud of my son, you know, continuing his education and just doing what he wanted to do. I just told him, just be happy and enjoy the moment. And go Eagles. I'm sorry, go Eagles. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. It's always uh, fun to have former players and Stan Heath's friends coming. And, of course, that is uh, Nate Scott's dad. Nate Scott yet to score in this game for Eastern Michigan. He's 0 for 3 as Rice attempts another 3 and it's chased down in the corner and saved by Rice. Okongo pushed out of the way and then the Broncos are going to push it here. Norman gets around Nate Scott, finger rolls it in, ties the game at 55. Confusion everywhere, you know, and Okongo's got to be stronger in that situation. Mojai is going to come in and spell him there, but... Oh, lazy pass. Monty Scott picked right there by B. Artis White. Times Eastern with just three points off those miscues, but that's something Western's been doing lately. Single digit turnovers for two straight games, five times this season. And the Broncos only with five in this one. So under seven to play. Eagles down by two, 57-55. Monty Scott with it. Gets a screen set, a little confusion there with Jai. Now they feed it into Colin Golson. Golson trying to back his man down, goes in hard right on Titus Wright. And we'll get a reach-in foul on the Broncos. You know, I like this play, and, and Mo even knows it. 
Mo needed to come around and rotate to the other side of the basket. And as soon as Golson went up with that, he, I watched his face, and he said, I needed to go around to the other side and get myself open, because when somebody drives right at you, there ain't no sense of you standing there just letting them drive at you. You gotta move, make, create space, get open. Of course, the double came over, and, and Mo wasn't in position, so he understood that, but Golson, good on him for being strong with it. Eastern in this game, just six of 13 from the free throw line, and Golson will split his pair. Eastern as a team overall, shoots 72% from the charity stripe. That's seventh in the conference, and it's a one-point game, 57-56. White drives in, picks up his dribble. Mo Jai right there for good defensive help, and they're gonna get a push off on Monty Scott. Interesting call there. And necessarily see it it was just you know I mean he had no way had nowhere to go and Monty's not really pushing him so much there as he is kind of just positioning himself for a bigger guy nonetheless so Scott will take it that is his well as Norman will bring it in Monty Scott now with three personals Norman with another three in a high arcer from the left wing and he fills it up Lamar Norman with 30 points in this game. Mind you, he had 34 against Eastern in the first goal round, which set a career high for him, and we still have 6.13 to go. Unbelievable. I mean, this kid's unbelievable. Every time he lets it fly, and that was, again, just a little shimmy shake cross. He didn't cross him up, but he just elevated with confidence. Comes out to guard Spotsville. It's a four-point lead. The largest for the game for the Broncos has been six. Each time, though, Eastern has answered the bell. Again, though, playing without Farrakhan. Bryce McBride been out all game. And Colin Golson was driving baseline. Will draw some more contact. And he's matched up with Norman. But here's I mean, the three. Look, look at this. I mean, that, that is, what, what is Darian supposed to do? If he gets any closer on him, he's going to go try to go by him. And he's quick enough to try, at least attempt that. So he's got to respect that, and he's gotten so far back, he's going to just launch an NBA three, and you got to just you know respect it. And on that replay, just the rotation of the ball, it was barely moving in the air, which just shows you how much of a shot he has. As Golson will miss the front end of the one and one, which is huge for Eastern. Yeah, that's going to come back and bite them if they can't start capitalizing. They're, they're in the bonus the rest of the way, and the next foul on Eastern puts Western in the bonus. So. Now falling out of control is B. Artis White. Didn't get any foul call, but still got the shot to go. This is danger zone right now. That's a nine to one run for the Broncos. Savicevic drops it off to Monty Scott. Monty pulls up at the top of the key, three offline, the rebound to White. Just a, a wasted possession when, you, when you're, you're down and you're trying to find something. You can't just jack a three when you feel like it. Eastern has gone cold. Their last field goal, by the way, was over five minutes ago. They've scored at the free throw line since. And Western now slowly pulling away. As Norman again scores 32 points. He's two off his career high, which he had against Eastern in that first goal round. Savicevic into the lane. Unlucky bounce, Jai has it, loose on the deck, corralled by the Broncos. Yeah, I like the move from Luca to get into the paint once again. That's that's a better look. The ball just kind of creamed off a little bit. Good touch on that shot. Mo was there trying to bounce around for a rebound, but no help there other than him. Now White, in between three different white shirts, driving baseline, kicks it out here to the left side. That's Martin, he'll try a three. Hits the left side of the rim. This was Western Michigan's game plan all along. They made their first threes, missed their next seven. Now they're 11 of 23. Savicevic over to Spotsville. Every possession here on out crucial for Eastern as Golson tried to slam that with a left-handed jam, jam. Now another five on four advantage, but the Broncos will slow it down. It's one of those plays where, yeah, it would have been a highlight reel, but you know what would have been better? Laying that in for two. And maybe you get a reach in for an and one. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're down 64-56, largest lead of the game right now. And now Western has the opportunity to salt this, at least the, the shot clock down a little bit. They'll step into a long three as the shot clock does wind down. That is one off the George Gervin game above center record. That is, I mean, it has been automatic. 
Every look he's had, he's shot with confidence. And free throws, when Stan Heath and company go back and look at this tape, that is going to be one of the things they circle. They are 6 of 16 in this game, and what a difference that would make in this close contest. Oh, huge, huge difference. There's Norman. Two away from his career high, which he had against the Eagles in that first meeting. They're content salting the game clock down as White drives in off the backboard, no good, and Jai with the rebound. Got to have a good shot here if you're Eastern. Again, can't catch it all back in one shot. You can certainly give it away by taking a poor one. Three players in double figures for the Eagles. That's Rice, Scott, and Savicevic, each with 10. Golson drives in and he turns it over. Seventh turnover for the Eagles. Tough game for, for Colin. They're just dribbling the air out of the ball, letting that clock run, and why not? You've come to Ypsilanti and are putting a dagger in Eastern Michigan's tournament hopes. Lamar Norman Jr. takes it to the hole. Gives the Broncos a 10-point lead and now matches his career high. What a play from Norman. My goodness, tacking the big man, creating the space, knowing that that arm bar is coming to push him off, anticipating that to put the ball off the glass as high as he did for it to fall. I mean, that is a experienced basketball play. We talked about him coming in. 26 double-figure games in 28. He had three 30-point games, now make it four. And now a new career high for him with 35. And by the way, he is just a junior. Real chance for him to be special next year. Now they feed in a jai and they travel. So back-to-back -back possessions for Eastern Michigan as they start to fall apart here in the waning moments. Something we had seen over the course of the season. We saw it again in their last game against Ball State. And even think about Northern Illinois. Remember the mm -hmm. quote that uh, Alexi Ayala got from NIU's head coach saying, Eastern is known to crack. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that. I don't know how else to say that. It's, it feels like Western stole this game in the last five minutes. It was 6.59, I remember watching, and it was a tie game or, or Eastern had a two-point lead. And now it's, I mean, barring something phenomenal, it's over. It was 55-53 as Norman was going for the three, doesn't go. The last field goal Eastern Michigan had was that three by Kevin David Rice, his second. It was at the 10-02 mark. And we have a minute 37 left in the game. That's, that's incredible. That one's halfway down, pops out loose, corralled by Nate Scott, put back is good. So they were winning the game pretty handily when he was playing. And if you look at the differential from him in the game to him out of the game, it's night and day difference. Mind you, they only had two field goals after he left the game at the end of the first half. That was Monty Scott with a three and Darion Spotsville with a two. Spotsville also had a free throw. So technically, they made nine field goals with Noah in the game, 11 overall in the first half, and they have just 12 here in the second half. Not a great stat to have when you're looking for consistency across the board. And White's had a nice second half for Western as well. He really has. I mean, the Western team, you can't take anything away from but White in double figures, 5 of 13. He also leads the team in rebounds tonight, four assists and two steals. Well, and, and Stan, he said that at half. Yeah. They had to control Norman and White, and both killed them here in the second right, half. Right. Well, Kevin's going to have an opportunity to to at least, you know, again, get these free points. The clock's not moving. The time is not your friend right now. So you're going to have to make these free throws, foul, hope they miss. And, and maybe this, your point is very valid. Six of 16 from the free throw line. Shoot 80% instead of where they're at. And this game's a lot closer. Going back to the artist White, he only had three points at the break. Now with the 12 here. And then Norman, we highlighted him at halftime, 11 points. He has put up 24 points here in the second half. But Kevin David Rice at the line. Every shot crucial. Through. So he needs to make this a seven-point game, and then it becomes a free-throw shooting contest the rest of the way. You don't have a lot of time to mess with because they can let full 30 tick off and now you're down to 27 I think seconds. automatic foul I think you get up there you, you full court press them they get it inbounds you're fouling because right now you're looking at who they're going to get it in foul
So going back, you know, with Farrakhan being out, as they still have not fouled, maybe they're just going to run this final possession with 27 seconds. But they've been out 17-point swing since Farrakhan been out. Well, they, they didn't want to foul either of the two guards, and now it, now it's just now gonna let him get, you're going to let him get to the rim and score on you, and you wasted 28 seconds by not executing a foul early. Well, they'll give it to uh, Nate Scott. He'll try a three offline, rebound into the hands of Western. Spotsville reaching in. Wright had it. But, yeah, exactly what you said. You know, credit Western Michigan, and they should be celebrating because you know what? When your team overall is seven and 22, you've won three of your last 18 games. You have a coach that's relatively on the hot seat, hasn't won as much as the university would have liked him to. Galvanized, coming on the road with nothing to play for and pulling out a huge victory when they were down until seven minutes to go in the game. I mean, that is a credit to the coaching staff, the players, and the unity that that team has over there. Kudos to the Broncos tonight. Yeah, second year coach, Clayton Bates. I mean, when you got the top scorer in the MAC, the top or second rebounder in the MAC, and then you finish strong. I mean, they had won three of their last five coming in. They beat Central 77-63, beat Akron 61-57 in overtime, and most recently beat BG 78-67. But you win this game, you've won four of your last six heading into your final game against Ball State. Well, and, that's, and Ball State's a team that uh, is already in the tournament. They're playing for their tournament life. So if you're going to embrace this spoiler role the way they had tonight for the last stretch of your season, good on you. You go into the offseason with a little bit of, uh, you know, momentum, and you got a player like uh, the, some of the guys that they have on this particular team, Freeman and Norman, excuse me, being the, the number one guy. I mean, great victory disheartening loss for Eastern Michigan tonight in more than one way. Especially here at home, and Hastings will hold on.